Hello, boys and girls. My name is Hotsusty, and welcome back to Beltless Factorio, where we have created a mess with trains. Last time, we tried to get a solution for that. Uh, we also uh, changed our setup for factories um, from the two station uh, unloading and then two station loading to only one um, to have a better distribution of wares and we are, have not yet reset or refactored uh, all the factories and we also extended this waiting line uh, so we can accommodate three additional trains especially here for the iron uh, there are always loads of train waiting to pick up iron plates and one thing that we noticed as well is that uh, whenever we have a rail line and then uh, crossing something over like here for the exit or the uh, way in um, that's not a good thing because uh, the train waiting to go in basically blocks the other line as well so down here I got rid of that so we only have uh, uh, ways in and ways out that connect to the near uh, train line but do not cross over however here we certainly have a crossing with lots of crossings and uh, there is a construct that allows the same passing but without crossing and is called a roundabout However, a roundabout takes a bit more space uh, as the outer lines are curved the uh, other way around. Um, so this will, I mean here on this side we would have the space, but here we are too close with the uh, exit lines. And seeing our design down here, uh, our new design it does not look better because here that's also pretty close to uh, the curve of the crossing however looking at this we do have a bit of space here in the middle so in theory we could move these two sets closer together and then get a bit more space um, up there so today we will of course continue uh, the our endeavor um, to uh, rebuild more factories in this uh, new setup and uh, in doing so we probably will create yet another version of the of the setup and I'm thinking maybe today we start with uh, copper smelting, have a copper smelting up here. Um, uh, or maybe two copper smelting because uh, the uh, smelting arrays, they are pretty uh, well used and for the most part they are also working with this uh, one two setup but I think we can do better if we have a, a dedicated uh, only one uh, loading station uh, for the whole thing and that basically means we will have to have um, more uh, more smelting arrays 
than we currently have. All right, let's try to see how we can manage that. Uh, in this setup, we do have um, 12 smelting rays per side. And in this, he would only be able to fit two. That's a bit of a bummer. So maybe I need to experiment a bit how we can manage to get three in there um, and bring everything closer together because I want to get rid of this long-handed uh, inserters for sure. So let's see what I can whip up and uh, then we can uh, proceed with uh, the rebuilding and rebalancing of uh, this base. We have been lucky because uh, if we only have one input uh, material, there was the setup that still has three assemblers like we had over here for our gears. So that was easily adaptable, moved all together to the middle so that uh, basically we have the, the, the output, the inner output lines of the two directions right next to each other. They do cross over uh, here, but that should not be a problem, right? And that gives us basically quite a bit of space here on the outside corners. So I think the next thing to do is let's whip up another one of these up here. And then we basically can disconnect this smeltery, uh, send all the copper trains, copper ore trains to the new one, which only has one unloading station. And then we just have to see about the copper plate train that they first pick up the copper plate from here. And if this one is empty, then they can pick up from the other one. Sounds like a plan. Our new copper smelting setup comes along nicely. We have both stations here. We get already copper ore delivered here because on the old smelter we are now only picking up. And one benefit uh, of this new setup we can see over here, example here, this train wants to go in here, even though this is limited to one station, but this train actually decided, okay, I need to go to the next station, which basically means this station becomes free and another train can target it. Uh, even if they cannot uh, pull into the station because this train is still waiting there. And with the new setup, we will no longer have this problem because the train uh, does not need to move on to the next station. Um, we might still have a similar issue if the uh, follow-up station on the schedule is occupied so uh, on this one that would be the uh, on the the waiting station for the green circuits so the i think the biggest problem might be if we have a train fueling stop after a loading station so train fueling should probably come after unloading and then into train loading. So 
I think uh, I will also set up a new um, steel smelting or iron smelting setup up here so we can make the transition for iron uh, as well as we have for um, for copper but uh, as mentioned uh, initially we want to replace these crossings wherever possible with uh, roundabouts uh, so let's design one and let's let's go down here and copy this clean crossing um, can copy that here and basically what we will need is a bit of a track here so that we know where our uh, entries and exits are and then we can uh, can uh, create our roundabout over it because what we I think these ones we will keep uh, and there we see we need a bit more more space there so if we keep those we need basically get rid of uh, everything in here and let's just have the signals here so we know uh, which direction we uh, we are going so from here we would go there And we need to go one further. Hmm. Maybe that's not the, the best way to do it. Usually I do have a blueprint for a roundabout, but that blueprint is for a rail line that has more spacing in between so what we can do is basically create a circle and then see how we get on with with that That seems to work way better than I would have expected and of course I am running out of rails so I will fetch a few more rail pieces finish the roundabout uh, and then show you the finished design this is the roundabout but as you can see, it's a bit wacky because uh, uh, due to the nature that we have our tracks as close together as possible, it does not line up. So on these lower parts, we have actually a diagonal section in there, while here on the upper part, uh, it is shorter and you can see that if we rotate that around it does not line up um, 
uh, on the uh, on the left on the right you can see um, on here they are one or two two tiles higher than if we rotate it and that's not ideal but it will have to do and I only placed uh, the signals um, here that one is wrong only on the when we are coming in and then have uh, signals here going around no signals going out because um, those would of course be the other type of signals this one and if a train stops here that one could block the roundabout meaning even if we have a train coming from here wanting to go there cannot go because there is a train on the rail and we want to avoid that so we have that done and um, now we have to see where we can then actually apply um, this uh, roundabout because as it currently stands we have a pretty tight packed factory set up so uh, if we uh, take this and hold it just over here we can see that the uh, the iron smeltery is in the way as well as our uh, green science um, factory however if we are going over to uh, to this corner or let's see between the two new setups for the copper smeltery there we can see we just scrap along the the rail that we already have of course with the uh, lab set up there we are in the way so maybe we have to uh, redesign the labs also at some point but i think here here we could already uh, replace um, replace the crossing with a roundabout so let's do that and then continue on with uh, the um, copper production line uh, to uh, move out or phase out the old smeltery uh, let the train go to the new one and then set up the same thing for iron i managed to squeeze in some more roundabouts as you can see here uh, also did some other improvements like uh, here we have now a fuel station that is dedicated for all the trains that go to iron plate loading because those are 18 trains so uh, on top of uh, the fueling station we have a waiting station for the fueling so basically that kind of acts like a, a second queuing station uh, to the to the whole uh, plate queuing station but as you can see with the roundabouts not everywhere are we in a state where it works out as it should we have still some uh, crossovers but i placed the roundabouts in where there was space 
and where we only have one line going over. So I think uh, for the next episode we need to tackle some of the problems like uh, the, the loading station to fix that that it comes out in a in a clean way then we also have uh, some of the of the loading stations um, that are not properly aligned there um, uh, where we have a, a bit of a of a crossover so uh, uh, to, to tackle that as well then we have more stations like this one to convert to the new setup um, and probably also the science setup so there we need to come up with a, with a different way and uh, I'm thinking maybe we extend the science to two squares. We have one square where we have the labs and then we have one square where we deal with the loading and unloading of, uh, of trains. Uh, that could work. And then of course here uh, we have a few more uh, the, the steel furnace set up um, down here that we need to change then the stone bricks and uh, everything behind that but as you can see I managed to clear out one two squares there um, we still have to uh, empty out this one and uh, where was the other one yeah this one but at least we do have trains sitting there waiting to go to a station so that means they are picking up some of the green circuits get that out of the way um, and once that's done then uh, we can move on and refactory even more of our base. So hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, join me next time uh, for more rail chaos in Beltless Factory. Until then, goodbye!